2020 continues. Once again, Barbara Walters. We have started to hear the drums of war pounding now. But 40 years ago at this time, they were deafening. Today in Havana, an international conference begins, marking the anniversary of what we call the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was 1962. The president was John F. Kennedy. And although we were afraid then, most Americans never knew just how close we came to nuclear war, and few have ever heard Fidel Castro's side of the story. Now, as high-level members of the Kennedy administration attend the conference in Cuba, Fidel Castro reveals to us formally classified information. All ships of any kind bound to Cuba, from whatever nation or port, will be found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons be turned back. For 13 days in October of 1962, the world held its breath. President Kennedy issued an ultimatum on October 22nd that any nuclear weapon launched from Cuba would be considered a Soviet attack, the first strike in a nuclear war. Evidence Negotiations between Kennedy and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev finally resulted in the Soviet missiles being withdrawn from Cuba, but we now know it was a nearly fatal collision. President Castro showed me documents that are being newly released this week at a conference to mark the 40th anniversary of the missile crisis. Is it the case that you wrote to Premier Khrushchev saying that if the United States did invade Cuba, the response should be a Soviet first strike, that is a nuclear strike against the U.S. Were we that close to nuclear war? Yes, we were very close to the nuclear war, extremely close. Yes, I said to Khrushchev, there is going to be an attack. In that case, do not give your adversary the possibility of a first strike that catches you off guard. Later, there was a great controversy because he misinterpreted my words. He said that I had said to him to deal a first strike, a preemptive strike, to begin a war. And I never said that. I only said not to give Americans the chance to strike first because I was sure that the U.S. reaction would be to strike against Soviet targets. Did you, Mr. President, think there was going to be an invasion by the United States? Well, it was not something I was worried about because we had been expecting it for a long time. The number of weapons we had at that time made us feel confident that we would be able to defend ourselves and resist, resist who knows for how long. I think a long time. Perhaps we would have been the first Vietnam. So we were not afraid. Uh, there was, that was not the reason for us to accept those missiles. Having the missiles in Cuba was very important for the Soviet leaders. I think they were very worried. The Soviets were. Even though Nikita was a bold man, he was a courageous man, and I can make criticisms of him, I realized it from that time the political mistakes he was making, which would later contribute a lot to the crisis because he did not tell the truth to Kennedy. In fact, he misled Kennedy. That was his main flaw. We insisted more than once that that military agreement between our two countries should be made public, that we should not hide anything, because we were doing nothing illegal. We were acting within the international law. However, Khrushchev did not pay any attention to us. So you think that if he had said, we're going to put missiles there for a balance of power, instead of keeping it secret, things might have been different. When Kennedy was discussing with Khrushchev whether there were offensive weapons in Cuba, Khrushchev said no. Therefore, Kennedy was misled. That was a very big mistake on the part of Khrushchev, one that we opposed vehemently. First, he misled Kennedy, and later, he made other military mistakes. And that meant a tremendous risk for our country. When 2020 continues, so enigmatic, not even the Cuban people really know his private life. Will the elusive Fidel Castro finally give up his secrets? Will you indulge me in one personal question? Next, 